Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm taking a look at the Silver Turk Big Finish episode um, my first review of 2017 this will be uh, by the time I upload this anyway on YouTube but yeah, um, <laughs> little side note before I fully get into this uh, review I really want to buy a fourth one of these Tenth Planet Side Men now and uh, end up, you know, sort of like disarming it and like, you know just just weathering it and texturing it so it looks more like that and also maybe even cutting off an arm or a leg uh, and that and just yeah making it look like authentic to this story but yeah um Tenth Planet Sidemen amazing awesome <laughs> I just thought I'd have this Sidemen in the background or generally around and about just to give it a bit more decor uh whatnot but anyway going on to the packaging uh or the uh CD case thing. Uh, you have the Tenth Planet Cyberman there, Mary Shelley there, the Eighth Doctor there, a tower with electric, which is uh, significant to the story, as I thought it was. The banner, which is introduced uh, sort of a hundred onwards with the monthly range, to my knowledge. Uh, comment below if I'm wrong. Uh, you've got the, uh, the banner there with McGann there and the Vortex there by Mark Platt, uh, the Silver Turk, uh, Paul McGann, and uh, the actress who plays uh, Mary Shelley. You've got some musical notes and stuff in the background as well, as well as the Tenth Planet Sideman looking badass, um, as usual. Um, and then on the inside you've got the writer's notes, which on the back has an amazing sort of hand-drawn look at a Tenth Planet Sideman. Amazing. Uh, you've got the grey discs, uh, sort of spirally effect, and then on the back it, it's got like a, you may also enjoy these and that, and which is always cool, I guess, a uh, little recommendation thing. And then on the back of the, the CD case, um, you have uh, all the cast and the bio, and when it was released, which is a 2011 release, and uh, the time, running time, which is 120 minutes. On the spine, uh, you've got 153, meaning it's the 153rd uh, release in the monthly range. Um, my first review, that's above 100, so that's quite a big thing for me, on my channel at least. But yeah, um, and also one of the only two uh, Big Finish that I have above 100 as well on the monthly range anyway. Because my plan was to try and get 50 to um, 100. Uh, and that, and then move on to the ones above a hundred. But yeah, then I realised there was amazing Silver Turk. Um, the story goes, uh, or uh, personal story goes, that I got this um, uh, for Christmas, but also I got it because uh, McGann had his birthday, and then uh, as such, they had a sale on all the McGann stuff in the monthly range, uh, and that. And so this was either six or eight quid. And so I was like, it's on my list anyway of stuff I would like to get for Christmas, ideally, Mum. Could you, you know, buy it? You know, you might as well, seeing as it's not, you know, fourteen ninety nine, uh, and that. And so she was awesome enough to buy me it, and uh, here I am reviewing it now. Um, absolutely phenomenal story, just sensational. You know, it flows so well. It has a cast that I could just about follow. It feels it is multi-layered, it feels like it's got lots of depth, but it's still somehow quite... It's complex, but it's not to the point where I felt like I was lost a lot of the time. I was a bit lost. I mean, I'm still a bit iffy on how the hell the Sideman even got destroyed at the end. I've forgotten already that, and I've literally just finished listening to it. Um, but aside from the ending and that being a bit unclear, for me at least, um, a lot of the rest of it was really good. You know, Mary Shelley and the Eighth Doctor just work like that. You know, they gel so well. They feel like just such a, a, a brilliant pairing. So the actress who plays Mary Shelley, you know, props to her, you know, big round of applause for her because she is sensational in this role. And that's just me from me coming across oh that's just me only listening to her in this and she's in uh Witch from the Well which is the next story and then Army of the Dead which is the story that I don't have. I do have Witch from the Well because I bought that. Um and so yeah I only need Army of the Dead and then I'll finally actually got a full trilogy as well from Big Finish which is quite exciting because I've not got a trilogy from Big Finish before. Um 
But yeah, the Cybermen are voiced brilliantly in this story. You know, they're eerie, they're vindictive, they're evil. They're, they're even, they're done in such a way where I actually sympathised with them, which then made me question me. It, it made me feel like, well, what, what's wrong with me? Am I alright? You know, like Mary Shelley, her performance and her characterization in this is so well done and, you know, so pure. You know, she has such a pure perspective of, no, the people who are being mean to the Cybermen, they're the bad people, not the Cybermen. But the Doctor has such a rigid and almost tainted and almost closed-minded, for lack of a better word or term, approach to them. You know, he's like, you know, closed-minded or close, close-minded to the fact that, you know, um, they could change and that. And there's just so many good bits like that, you know, the bit about, you know, the stuff about, like, Mary Shelley saying, oh, this is like a, a church or a Vatican or some sort of monastery thing, some sort of religious base place, based place, right? And um, and then she's on, on about, you know, this is a place where people will go to worship, and then the, the side man's like, you know, what is the point of, you know, so, uh, praying to a deity, but what about where your soul goes? We have no need for souls, you know, like just that, like the concept, like the concept of their religion or their belief system gets put into question and the fact that they don't really have one, you know, what happens if humans did augment ourselves with machinery and, and robotics and, you know, um, you know, uh, da 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 and that, you know, augmentation and, uh, what's the word, um, augmentation and AI and that, you know, like, would we lose our concept for religion then? Because a pure, a, lo a, a logical based creature cannot have a religion, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a thing made by people for people. I think, and that, and yeah, this is really eerie, atmospheric, gothic horror-y, so if you like your sort of Tom Bakery gothic horror stuff, then this is a must-have for you. Um, I'm praising this for, he like, hell, even though it's a Sideman story, and this is coming from someone who's not even a big, massive fan of the Sidemen. I'm not the biggest fan of the Sidemen, I would prefer the Daleks, personally, but this, this is just a must-have for anyone who's a Sideman fan. Um, you know, it's just eerie, the Cybermen sound really odd, uh, peculiar and different, but in a good way. You know, they sound really battle damaged, really weary, really out of character almost. You know, they're not like, you will be like us, you will come with us, Doctor. You know, they're, they're not talking like how they did in the Tenth Planet, but they are talking similarly enough to know that it's the Cybermen, but they are still damaged and, you know, really profoundly, you know, hurt both f visually, I imagine them to be, and also voice-wise they're damaged and that, you know, um, and I think that's brilliant, you know, um, again, you, there's just so many multi-layers multi to this story, I think my major gripe with it maybe is that it starts out a bit slow, and then picks up the pace in parts three and four, but then there's so much to get through in part three and four, and then the Cybermen are already revealed in, or oh, there's more Cybermen, co Cybermen content in three and four, but then in part one and two, it's more about the mysteriousness and the atmosphere and the world building, I think. Um, and so, you, you know, for some people, part one and two might be so slow and such a world building character, world building sort of slow slog through that, you know, you might get bored, maybe, um, just saying that might be a thing. But for me, I found it still enjoyable, those first two parts, you know, they run smoothly, everything feels really explained well, um, there's quite a few different characters, but I didn't feel like I was massively confused with a lot of them. You know, there's, um, there's a, a rather big cast, yeah, you know, you've got the Doctor, Mary Shelley, um, you know, you've got all sorts of different characters. I'm trying to read the names, but all the names are really obscurely hard to read and pronounce as well. But, um, yeah, you've got, like, the... the what is it, horse and carriage uh, driver person who, spoiler alert, gets killed, but, and I was uh, genuinely, like, upset, I actually really liked his, his character, simplistic as hell character, but just felt 
like, you know, like a, a real fleshed out character, you know. Um, I think it's a brilliant use of the four part format on Big Finish's part, and it feels like one of those really tight, well written Tom Baker esque four part ones, you know, that just runs really fluidly and nicely. You know, I could imagine this actually being filmed. Um, and it being amazing to watch. I'm not complaining that it's in audio form, it's just a format that I'm still not as used to, say, visually. You know, we are all pretty much grown up with visuals of audio, or just audio, you know. Very few people are b b brought up with just audio um, and that, but I think excluding that, like, the sort of media barrier there, for me personally, I still found it an enjoyable, amazing, phenomenal listen, and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who's a fan of the Eighth Doctor and a fan of the Sidemen, you know, it's set in the, uh, well, you think it's set in the past, but it's actually, I think, set in the future, or Mary Shelley's future at least, um, you know, it's got interesting characters, interesting Cybermen, interesting plot, and, you know, it's dark, it's eerie, it adds another layer to the Tenth Planet Sidemen, you know, that we don't see in other stories, I don't think. I mean, aside from maybe spare parts, but I would easily give this a well-earned 10 out of 10 up there with shirts, though, in my opinion. And again, this is coming from someone who's not even a big fan of the Sidemen. Um, you know, uh, or I'm not a massive fan of them. I do like them, but I'm not a massive fan of them. But yeah, a 10 out of 10 from me. The Silver Turk gets a 10 out of 10. I adore this story, and I will easily be listening to it again, uh, probably, hopefully, sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe.